Hey, 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 good afternoon. Hey. Good afternoon, Des. How are you? I'm very, I'm very, very well. well. Mr. Turner, Mr. Turner, how are, Turner you? how are you? I'm very well indeed. Very well. I'm glad to be here with you. Great, 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 great. great, great. For, for, for those of you who are, those watching, who are watching, thanks for, thanks for, thanks for tuning, tuning in. in. Yeah, um, this, this, this afternoon, you know, Junior, you know, you see him and you see him around the northeast. He brings smiles to lots of your faces. And we've loved having him in the studio over the years. And and we want to... We, we wanted to we do wanted some of his original, original songs, songs this afternoon. afternoon. Yeah, yeah, it's something I never really do. You know, I don't even do them at my live shows. Very rarely do I do them. Well, do you know well, what? There might be people at home who maybe who don't even know that, know stuff, that stuff, mate. And, 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 and it's easier, it's easier for, for me to kind of sing your praises, your praises than, than you are, right? You are, right? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm a shy lad, as you know. Cool. So, Junior, what's the first song and what's the story behind it? The story behind it is uh, we go back um, probably 2014. Um, I'd been through a tough time in life, really, as we all kind of hit a patch in my life. um, And I had um, came out the other side of it. And um, like people do, you find yourself with a lot of emotions and thoughts. And um, I've always kind of been wanting to write poetry and stuff like that. So and obviously I can sing. Um, so I began to write this, the thoughts, the feelings, and the next thing it became a song, and uh, the song's called Save Me. So, so the, the song won the a few awards, awards, right? right? Yeah. What, 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 what happened what with happened the song, with the song Junior? It, it was th- This was the changing point for me, really, when it comes to my own music. Um, Save Me, um, um, I was, it's a funny story, actually. Um, I'd been contacted by someone in America um, who played it on a radio show, and they were like, yeah, look, we want to do this with it and we want to put it, put it out to these people and we've got contacts. And um, as you know and as I know, um, the music business is, is full of lots of wannabe people um, that I've learned over the years, so I was kind of a bit sceptical. But at the same time, look, I had nothing to lose. It didn't cost us anything. So, yeah, pl- you know, play a ball, take, take it and do what you can do. And uh, the next thing they did, uh, they put the um, actual... Um, song wherever it went, and then I got a. It was really random, actually. I got a message about three o'clock in the morning, saying you've won this award, and I'm like, really? And um, yeah, um, at like it was in Hollywood, um, and it was at the um, High Joyce. Um, it was in the um, <laughs> <laughs> it was in the um, uh, the, the is it the Grammy Hall of Fame? This was where this award was held, and. Um, yeah, it won the best pop song um, out of amazing, like thousands amazing. of entries. Um, Do you just happen to have it with you, Junior? You know what it is. It's just like Blue Peter. This here's what I made earlier. Um, so yeah, that that is the award there, um, and uh, that came in 2014, and um, I was really really lucky um, to have won that, and it kind of opened a lot of doors because then other people were coming on, um, and it kind of snowball from there um the song began to get played um for some reason all over the states and um it went to places like nashville um it went to places like new york and stuff and then on twitter you're starting to get them um, where you get like a new pl- a now playing credit where people tag you if, if your song has been played and they, they just start to grow mass and i'm like wow look where this is going um i'm just a lad from wall's end that's just put a song on the internet and somehow it's snowballing um brilliant, brilliant. And the next thing, I, I was winning awards left, right, and centre for for the song without even having to lift a finger, so to speak. Awesome. Well, mate, we're, mate. we're dead we're proud dead of you, right? I'm going right? to disappear, disappear off the screen, off the screen. Try, and try and sort my, my echo, echo out, out and, and um, um, go for it. Go Give for us, the, it. Song, us man. the song, man. All right, let's go. Here we go. Cheers, Des. My head and my heart are speaking so loud Which one do 
Thank you very much. Cheers for all the kind comments. Thank you very much, Jeff, as well. Thank you. Love it. Love it. All right. Fantastic. 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 Settling in now. Brilliant. Brilliant. Junior, Junior, Junior. Junior I'm, I'm, I'm getting some I'm getting messages some saying, saying I'm a little, saying bit, I'm a little echoey. bit echoey. So That's I'm going to say the least the words, words I have to. I have to. That, that'll be a rare thing for you, Des. <laughs> <laughs> Junior, next, Junior song. next song. What's the story, What's the story behind, behind it? it? The next song that I'd like to uh, take you on to, um, we're going to go back to 2015, so we can kind of do them in chronological order, if that's all right with you. Um, obviously, Save Me took off, um, and then I, I did a few small local to home projects. Obviously, I started to have people reach out about different causes and charities, as you know. You know, I've, I've worked very closely with charities over the years and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... Um, in doing so, um, I was um, contacted on the actual um, um, the the first um, anniversary. If you remember, uh, any Newcastle United fans, football fans, soccer fans for the Americans if they're watching, um, <laughs> <laughs> Newcastle United is, is a football club that's very close to my heart. I, I love Newcastle United, and uh, it's a big thing for where I come from. Football is like you know, it's a be all and end all. And I was contacted. Um, sadly, um, in two thousand fourteen. Two of our um, supporters were on board a flight um, for a pre-season friendly, which is crazy. Going all the way to New Zealand to watch Newcastle United play. Sadly, uh, when the plane got over the Ukraine, it was shot down. And uh, all 298 people on board that plane, um, along with the two Newcastle United supporters, were killed outright. Um, on the actual first anniversary, um, the morning of the anniversary, I was contacted by um, Barry Sweeney. Liam Sweeney was one of those two um, Newcastle United supporters killed on board that plane, and um, I was asked if I would uh, write a song in their memory. Now, as as, as you probably think yourself, um, you've got to be very cautious about doing things like that because it can be taken out of context and stuff, you know. 
So I was a bit apprehensive at first. I wanted to verify that the person I was speaking to was who they were, etc. Um, and within course. minutes, I, I'd got a, a phone number to call. And I spoke to Barry. And Barry was uh, on his actually way. He, I think he was going to Holland. And um, where they have like the anniversary, because I think the plane's remains are, are over there somewhere in, a, in an airport hangar thing. Okay, okay. And um, Des, uh, and um, Barry was on his way then. Uh, uh, he answered the phone, and um, I didn't know it was Barry. I, I thought it was someone like a friend of the family suggesting it. So I had kind of said in this message, look, if if you get me to speak to someone to do with the family and they give it the okay, then I'll certainly consider it. So when this phone call rang, I didn't expect Barry Sweeney of all people to pick it up and on the first anniversary. So it kind of left me somewhat a little bit, oh. So in any case, I spoke to him and um, it was agreed that I would um, do the song. But the problem was that day was the anniversary. So if I'd left it a week, two weeks, a month, the, the kind of it being poignant and relevant, that, that moment would have passed. So I had to write and record that song ASAP, as you know yourself. And it's a sensitive issue, right? Yeah, man. It, uh, it's huge because it's still ongoing now. They still don't know who's to blame or whatever, you know, so that you, people can't mourn or anything. So um, I wrote the so I got the contract on the Friday. I wrote the song on the Saturday. I recorded it on, on a mobile phone, singing down a phone. I sent it to Barry on the Sunday. And I was in Broadwater with, yourself, with, with Gav on the Monday. Yeah, and I, re I released the song. I released the song on the Wednesday. So the song was written, recorded, and out on iTunes and Amazon within five days. And wow, this wow. song this song went absolutely crazy because Alan Shearer, uh, Faustino Espria, some of the Newcastle United ex-players, big names, were, were putting on the social media. Um, and it was crazy, you know, X Factor contestant Sam Bailey at the time. She was running for to win the X Factor, and she's a Leicester City fan. She shared it on her Twitter. And it just snowballed, and it was absolutely crazy. But it's really nice because, like, at the outset of what, what we're talking about today, when I say I don't sing songs from my own repertoire, when I go to do shows live now, the one thing they say in pubs and clubs around here in the Northeast, can you do the song for the lads? And it gets asked for everywhere I go. And it's really it nice really because... Uh, and the thing is, it's not my song, it's their song. I always, it's the lads' song, it's not mine. It, it's, you know, John Alder and Liam Sweeney. Them two were the loyalist fans. You know, we sing the song at the ground about being the loyalist supporters in the whole world. These two really epitomise what we sing about. And um, so it was an honour to do it. Um, and what one last little tale before we, uh, we go into the song is, um, uh, within a week of recording and releasing it, I got invited... Um, I got, uh, like I said, Alan Shearer and stuff was shared on social media. I got a phone call from Alan Shearer's assistant asking if I would appear alongside him at the Lancastrian suite in front of 3,000 diehard Geordies, blokes, brilliant, brilliant. men, all full of lager. And uh, so I went to this gig and they put me on this table and I was on the table with all the Bobby Robson Foundation um, and Barry Sweeney. Well, I'd never actually really met him as such or lovely, lovely. seen him. I had to... Hi, Chris Dobie. Sorry, Chris Dobie's just jumped in as well. He's one of the best darts players in the world, that lad. Um, um, Give it for me. Uh, yeah, on, sorry. He's a PDC <laughs> player. I've got to say hello to him. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I, I did this um, I did this event um, at um, at the Lancastrian Suite and honestly thought I was like the alarm to the slaughter when I went out, you know. And um, halfway through, the whole room stood. 3,000 men with tears in their eyes and Alan Shearer then stood. And so I'm looking down at probably the biggest idol I've ever known, you know, God is in front of us. And he stood applauding me. And then I looked to the right to try and divert me attention. And who do I look at? Barry Sweeney stood crying his eyes out. Well, you know what it is? Still to this day, it's probably one of the biggest moments in my life. And um, it's something I'll never ever forget. I bet, mate. I bet. I bet. I bet. I bet. Well, Junior. Well, Junior. Really, really, really proud really of you, mate. Come on, let's give us the track. track. All right, let's go. This is United We Stand. <laughs> Just another trip away They're off to see the lights play far away 